Hello and welcome back to another Diecast Resurrection. In today's video, we are going to mess around with a couple new clear coats that Createx has sent me. Check these out. If you happen to read my top comment in yesterday's video when I worked on this little little sexy Bel Air here, you might have seen that I'm interested in working on a military vehicle. I've got an old power wagon carcass that I would like to turn into a MASH era ambulance. In order to do that, we're gonna need some matte finish. These are water-based acrylic polyurethane. And as far as I know, you just thin them and spray them. Ultraviolet light stabilizer clear protects pigments and dyes. Apply as a top coat over any Createx paint for indoor and outdoor projects. Use as a primer, direct to metal, plastic, wood, glass, and more. Well, that's pretty cool. So we could spray this directly onto bare metal if mixed with candy and you'd have the same kind of thing as like a Spectra Flame. Use as a mixed medium for Candy 2.0. So that's why I have the Candy 2.0 here. I've been using the gloss version of this UVLS clear as the medium for the candy this whole time. You guys don't see me mix very often, but the ratio is roughly 50-50, so half clear, half candy, and then just reduce to, you know, the consistency of milk, or maybe a little bit thicker than that, depending on what you're doing. You guys will see in all my videos, I usually have my little stir stick and I just shake a drop off the stir stick. If I can shake a drop off the stick, that's good enough for me to spray in most cases. So, so I haven't used either of these, and we got a project coming up that's gonna require a matte finish, so I thought maybe we should do a little bit of research and get to know this stuff a little bit because uh, the project I'm working on, if I mess it up at the clear coat stage, it's gonna be a real bummer. So today we're gonna try this stuff out. I got a couple little Humvees here. Gonna be my test subjects. These are just cheapy Maisto. I think they're even plastic bodied Humvees with these big gangster rims. I don't know, they always kind of make me laugh, but we're gonna just repaint these with a new army green and then I wanna finish one in the matte and one in the satin and we're just gonna compare the difference. So I guess let me start by just ripping these apart quick. I just got little plastic. Are these plastic? It feels so light. I don't know. Let's see. Let me drill them quick and I'll let you know. You know what? They are die cast. They're just super light die cast. I feel like I could crumble it in my hand. I don't really care too much for the tinted glass, but this is a nicely detailed body. Doing a little bit of clear coating on here isn't going to hurt nothing, so we'll be able to get back to these with another project. Maybe redo the base. Get some bigger tires under them or something. If you want to have a look at the bottom, I'll show you. Humvee. That's basically it. It's got little pizza cutter wheels. Maisto.com made in China. We'll put these to the side. I probably won't even show the bases again. We're just going to be comparing paint finishes here today. These are sick. I like these. I like these a lot. I don't know, should I guys strip them? What do you guys think? All right, you talk me into it. We'll strip them. Strip them clean. That way we get to see all the little details. These things actually turned out to be pretty amazing castings. Check these out. Whoop. It's got that soft top. Dual fuel. All the little rivets. Hell yeah, man. These are sweet. We're going to get back to these for sure. Once I figure out a little bit better base for them, get some better wheels. Need some Humvee appropriate wheels, which is a tall order, man. Humvees are pretty sweet. One of my buddies actually has a Humvee. I think he used to have two. I don't know if he has two anymore. We, we don't talk as much as we used to. You guys remember like five months ago when I was doing those little Jimmy stop motion videos and we had that, uh, that evil farmer named Quinn? So why are you here? Looking at getting another one of my leftovers. Hey, we just want this pro stalker. Not looking for any trouble, Quinn. Is that so? Well, I have cash, so tell me what you need for it. So be it. A lot of people didn't appreciate how salty he was, but... <laughs> I don't know, I had a good laugh at it. So these cleaned up rather well. I can see a little bit of a couple of flakies left in this here grill. If you're looking for awesome hemostats like this, these are actually from the fishing aisle. And uh, I think they were Berkeley brand, possibly. I've been using these two pairs for years. And yeah, they were solid. I'd buy a couple more of these if I could find them. 
I don't know if they sell them anymore, but the fishing aisles got real nice heavy duty ones. It's tempting to buy little ones like this. You'll have your car locked into these bad boys and it'll be freshly painted and all of a sudden it just buck rogers across your room. So yeah, I reserve this for doing little itty bitty things. I don't know why I'm talking about hemostats. Let's mix up a little bit of forest green or something similar and give this a try. Maybe we should use protection. Always use protection. So even these colors, we need to mix, or you should be mixing with the clear coat. So there's really good mixing instructions on everything. If you guys look are looking for any Createx information, the best place to go is check out their YouTube page. You'll see a hairless gentleman making videos over on that channel. His name's Chris Arpin. He's the man. There'll be simple videos over there where it's like how to reduce Createx colors paint or how to mix Candy 2O colors. I'll leave a link in the description for Createx. That looks pretty darn good. I kind of think I might want to put a little bit more green back into there maybe. No. Just a wee bit more green. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. This is my UVL, <laughs> UVLS gloss, as you can see. And we're just gonna add, I usually add a little bit more than 10%. I'll probably do like 30%. Beautiful, and then we're just gonna reduce that until I can, you know, shake a drop off whenever I want. You see how it's still sticking? Not ready, so I gotta reduce that a little bit. But that's looking real good. This UVLS gloss will come in bottles this size too. So you don't have to commit to a big tub like this, but they sent it to me just cause I'm always using their paints and check it out. This is kind of the inspiration for my MASH ambulance. You know, we've got the same kind of grill. It's the same kind of W series power wagon. The one we're using for the mash truck has a little bit more of a rounded nose, so I don't know if it's, uh, not exactly sure what series it is, but this thing just reeks of America. You guys remember Max Squeaky? This is one of his cars he sent in a long time ago. It's pretty awesome. So I guess we're gonna head to the spray booth. I'm gonna hit these with a real light mist of a, a sealer, just as kind of like a ground coat, nothing too crazy. We'll paint these bad boys green and then maybe we'll come back and I'll mix up the clear coats at the bench here before I spray them in the booth. Okay, we'll do that. Looking at these in the raw paint form from Createx, it looks like the perfect army matte as is, right? 
A lot of people would probably be tempted to just run these as is, you know, good enough. But um, these aren't protected from UV light and the Createx paint isn't super durable. It's like if you were to scratch this with your fingernail, you could probably tear the paint if you tried hard enough. So we got to protect them with some clear coats. But I got to say, man, I nailed that color. Am I right? Leave a like. Leave a like if I nailed that color. That's looking great. I got some filters here. A lot of these paints get a little crusty around the cap here sometimes and um, you can get little pieces of dried paint in your airbrush. It doesn't happen to me very often, but it could happen. All right, we got our two samples, a satin and matte. We're gonna do a little bit of reducing. I like using this 4013 reducer. I think they recommend using 4011 as just a general purpose reducer. I started using this 4013 to replace 4012, which I really liked, and I just, I don't know, I like using this stuff. I'm gonna start by reducing these about 20%. Oops. From memory, I think uh, these are 190 micron filters, just your kind of general purpose paint filter. I think Chris recommended a 60 micron. I have to rewatch the video. So this is a little bit big, but it's better than nothing. This will stop any of the real big pieces. But I usually don't strain my paint too much. Been getting away without it for the most part. And this. I'm gonna have to send a message to Chris actually. Um, in his most recent video, he was using these kind of smaller filters, little mini ones. What I used to do in the olden days, I buy a big box of these full size ones and I would just snip off the little cone. And that's what you guys would see me when I'd be like filtering my red line paint. That's what I used to do, just snip off the bottom of a full-size one. So, I think we're ready to go here. Mm. One last thing I'm gonna mention in the spray booth, as I'm putting this stuff on, as you can imagine, it's gonna go on a little bit milky, right? You kinda spray it on there until you see a little bit of a haze, a little bit of blue, and then you know you got enough on there, and then you dry it with your brush until all that blueing goes away before you do your next coat. So, I'll probably start with two coats, we'll see how it looks in the booth and then we'll come back and review, okay?
All right, first impression, that was super easy to spray. I don't know if you guys noticed when I pointed out the little milky ridge. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right terminology to use, but you saw there was a little bit of buildup. I was kind of pointing that out as uh, to know when to stop spraying. As soon as you see that little bit of extra blue, yeah, it dries really quick. We definitely have a matte finish, like hard to believe I put two coats on there, right? Now yeah, it looks like there's nothing on there. This one is a nice satin finish. Hell yeah, this stuff dries really quick as well. I don't know if you guys notice, um, a lot of times you'll see me finish a coat and before I go to air dry, you'll see me kind of just bring the gun over to my wrist here. What I do is I just spray it on there to see if there's anything coming out of my tip. Sometimes if your tip's getting a little bit clogged, you'll keep getting some, uh, a little bit of blow by. And if you're trying to dry your piece and you're slowly bleeding out extra clear coat onto there, it's gonna be a problem. So that's why I always spray my glove like that. So that's what this is, and this is already dry. I mean, I just came out of the spray booth. These are totally, completely dry. So, hell yeah, man, that's a pretty good product. Hopefully, uh, hopefully some of you guys found this interesting. Or we're definitely gonna be using this stuff a lot more in the future. I would like to experiment mixing some of the candy colors with these satins, or even these matte colors, and we can do some pretty cool stuff with that, I think, so. Anyways, I'm super happy with these results. Now I feel confident uh, about uh, working on Project MASH Ambulance. So hopefully you guys enjoyed something in today's video. And make sure you leave a like to support the channel. Say hello in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See you later, guys. Glee, 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 glee.